Candace Owens, a master debater who leaves no room for argument. Just like that. Just, yeah, just please, please. I hate this, this selective feminism that we hear on the left all the time, okay? Well, don't make this a feminism issue because it's not a feminism but issue. But it is. When you're because, going out and attacking on, women, Candace you're not. Finish. I'm not done. I'm not done, okay? When you're going out and attacking women, you are not a feminist. This is not defensible whatsoever. And you sit here and you say this because what? you care about mothers. The basis of this is that people are upset that illegal immigrants are being separated from their mothers. Why don't you refocus some of that energy to the black community? They've been having their family separated. In fact, it's subsidized in the black community. You appreciate single motherhood. You are given more mother for more more money to families for fatherless absence. So all of this selective fake outrage when you guys do not have the same defenses for the black community is really lost on me. And it's, it's time's ups on this altogether. I think the black community has had enough of you guys being selectively outraged for parents of illegal immigrants, but not for the parents of the black community who have been separated from their family uh, for about six decades. All right. One can't help but wonder if her husband ever manages to get a word in. Seen what she's even done in business and how she tries to manipulate her audiences like to get out of like deals and contracts like she's totally insane yeah. like she's the most toxic feminist that's ever existed and at what she does is basically the threat is that if she doesn't get what she wants she writes a song about a guy and then has 15 million girls singing the songs and drops little clues so they know who it's about i mean it's totally psychotic if you but, really think about wait, it was, i don't think you appreciate no how psychotic no, that is that you can't no date her for two weeks <laughs> without her writing a song about you i mean what she did to john May john mayer as john well mayer, he was yeah. like I literally did nothing to her. Like, we went on one date, and yeah. I didn't deserve this. You were ruining And then this there's brain. a bunch of, like, 10-year-old <laughs> girls whose brains are not developed who then go and attack whoever it is. Like, Scooter Braun's family, his young kids, literally had to go into hiding and get security because Taylor Swift wanted out of the deal that he legally purchased her catalog of music. Yeah. My dad signed a contract, I mean, when I was 15. He now has the catalog because he purchased it. And then they tried to kill Scooter Braun's family, and he did nothing wrong. We find out that when it comes to crunching the numbers on an hourly basis, the math wizards behind the curtain haven't been keeping score. So do, so do you take into account the fact that on average, a male full-time employee works longer hours than a female full-time employee? N not directly, no. What about if you did it on an hourly rate? What would be the gender hourly pay gap? You don't have that done. No. Uh, if a woman was working fewer hours but earning the same uh, rate per hour as a man doing the same job, would that show up as a gender pay gap? No. It's like realizing you've been playing Monopoly, but forgot to pass out the money at the start. So, if men and women are earning the same hourly wage for the same gig, but aren't clocking in the same hours, are we still playing the game of inequality? Or is it just a wildly confusing episode of who's got the better time management skills? This is a classic, especially enjoy the last part about being passionate. Women in this country still make 77 cents on the dollar for what men make. So if exactly. women don't make less than men? Actually, if you start looking at the numbers, Rachel, there are lots of reasons for that. Oh, wait, wait, no, wait. Well, Don't tell me what, the reasons are. Do women make less than men for doing actually, the same no, thing? because... Wow! Well, okay, well... Okay. Well, for We're example, men work, men work an average of 44 hours a week. Women work 41 hours a week. Men go into professions like engineering, science, and math that earn more. Women want more flexibility. Listen, flexible this is not a math is hard No, no, no. Yes, it is, actually. No, right now, women are making 77 cents on the dollar for, but that, for, for what men are making. So, but that's not I'm, true. So, if so, every, right, greedy, Rachel make her point. every greedy businessman in America would hire only women, save 25%, and, and be hugely... This is a and I love how passionate you are. I wish you were as right as, about what you're saying as you are passionate about it. I really do. This one, folks, is how to make a point with class and wit. Children and parents upset by what the school principal did during a lockdown drill. She proceeded to walk around the campus and pretend to shoot people she saw using finger movements and banging on the window. The students was told, boom, you're dead. The one shocking, surprising thing he said as a six-year-old was, I'm just really glad none of my friends died. Now the principal at the school, Dr. Nina Denson, has been put on leave. This type of drill where a scenario was run um, is not approved by the district or part of our uh, district protocol. The principal made an announcement that seven children were dead. In an unprecedented fusion of method acting and emergency preparedness, Dr. Nina Jensen, a school principal with a flair for the dramatic, took lockdown drills into the realm of performance art. Picture this, a school campus transformed into a stage, where the principal, armed with nothing but her fingers and a pension for suspense, prowls the corridors, proclaiming boom, you're dead to bewildered students through classroom windows, announcing the faux demise of seven students over the PA system. Oh, poor Katie. 
And why on earth would you go and do this on national TV? I don't like, I don't like footballers' names. I don't like names after seasons of the year. I don't like geographical location names, celebrity names, things like Apple, things like, you know, Tilly Fizz or Jolly Apple, whatever they've decided to call their crazy. My child's called Poppy. My child's called Poppy. Yes, Katie, your child is called Poppy. It's what like about geographic other? stuff? Geographic. Oh, so Brooklyn or London. Your or... child's called Indian. Yes, but you know, <laughs> it's, that's because she's... It's... I do feel sorry for her. Kind of. You see and decide for yourself. No. Yeah, this is him. He's gay. I called up my dad and I said, hey, guess what? Your grandson? Gay. Gay, gay, gay. My dad says, you can't just say that your baby is gay before he gets a chance to tell us he's gay. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Straight people do it all the time. Little baby boy is born. Oh, he's gonna be a heartbreaker. Little baby girl is born. Oh, you better lock her up when she turns 16. Clearly, people want their children to be straight. Well. My son is gay. Gay. Very gay. Very gay. And what do you think of all this? Let's hear what Candace has to say. First up, number one, the Black National Anthem. Now, obviously, this has been a very long push from the left, but it turns out that we are bringing segregation back because we now have the Black National Anthem followed by the White National Anthem or the other National Anthem. Pretty soon, there'll be an LGBTQ National Anthem. You know how it goes. Did you put your hand on the heart and stand up? Well, you shouldn't have done that if you're a white person because that was for us. That was for black people. And you should maybe sit or stand accordingly. I'm not sure what the right thing to do is here. We've been talking about this a lot. Seriously? What's next? Segregate everything based on race and color? What do you make of this? To build a railroad from all the way from Riyadh, all the way through the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Israel, up through Greece, and then across the, not the railroad, but pipeline across the... the, the We're a billion, two hundred, a trillion, two hundred billion dollars. I, uh, um, anyway. I, look, I gotta choose my words here. I mean, I, I, I get it. But. If you just. I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Well, Jaylene Cheney made global headlines this weekend after claiming fat people are entitled to extra seats on planes because they're so fat. Aww. She said all plus-sized passengers should be provided with an extra free seat or even two or three seats, depending on their size, to accommodate their needs. Indeed, she argues, if her presence is larger than life, surely her seating should be too. A pioneering stance in the quest for spatial justice at 30,000 feet. Well, look, uh, Jaylene, uh, you can have your extra seat and have 10 extra seats. But you've got to pay for them. What the... <laughs> Even Saudis are now taking a dig at United States for the political hilarity on display to the world. Great choices, Trump versus Biden. Good luck. Thank you very much. Today, we're going to talk about the crisis in Spain. Yeah, we got to talk about the crisis in Africa. Yeah, Russia. Yeah, Russia. Putin, listen to me. I have a very important message to you. The message is... And the president of China... Oh, I didn't finish Russia. No, sir. Thank you to correct me, First Lady. Damn. And God bless... <laughs> One piece of advice to men. If you've ever heard the word emotional affair, she's been having plenty and plenty of plenty of sex. Oh boy, complexities of being a woman. What would men ever know? 
They use the word emotional affair to make themselves feel less guilty. More like an all-you-can-eat buffet of feelings. Okay. And then some. The fact that they're saying emotional affair is their way of diluting the truth. The sugar-coated alibi. It's like saying, I'm on a diet at a buffet. Ask yourself this. If you're a man talking to a woman that you know is interested in you, so much so that she's risking her relationship, are you just going to talk to her? No way. Just talking? That's like going to a theme park and saying you're there just for the cotton candy. <laughs> Are you not going to f*** with her? Oh. Sure. Emotional affair staying just emotional? What? That's like a soap opera with no drama. Woo. Who are we kidding? How does it stay an emotional affair in your mind? Men, adept in many arenas, can be charmingly gullible in the nuanced ballet of relationships, where the heart rules over the head. And you are the most famous young man in Australia after cracking the joke. A vegan and a vegetarian are jumping off a cliff to see who will hit the bottom first. Who wins? I don't know. Who wins? Society. <laughs> this kid's on a comedic rampage, folks. First vegetarians and vegans. Who's next on the chopping block? Any other jokes up your sleeve? Back in your day, you had Wonder Woman. In my day, we wonder if it is a woman. <laughs> it seems in today's woke culture, you're the one who's truly awoke. Awoke to the fact that sometimes, the only way to understand our world is to laugh at its complexities. The truth is, you've become a group of wreckers. You just like wrecking things for the sake of wrecking. Nobody is coming along why to your cause because of these stupid stunts. Your disruptions, blocking roads, halting travels, all for awareness, seemed less like noble activism and more like a masterclass in how to alienate allies. Hey. We all think you're a bunch of puerile spoilt brats who are just going out of their way to cause other people inconvenience and ruin their fun. That is the reality. Spoiled brats on a mission to irritate, not inspire. The more you obstruct daily life, be it for work, school, or funerals, the more you're seen not as heroes, but as narcissists who use a cause to justify selfish attention they would never otherwise get. The more families that you stop in getting to work or getting their kids to school for important exams, or getting to funerals, or whatever it may be, the more you do that, the more we hate you. Can you imagine you coming to our restaurants and, and then you get some people coming to your table and trying to disrupt your evening? You're in a cozy restaurant, about to take a bite of your meticulously chosen dish when suddenly, it's not just the aroma filling the air, but a chorus of protests. It's like adding extra spice, but nobody ordered it. It's, a, it's abuse. I'm going to start, Ryan, I'm going to start running into vegan restaurants. And just see how you lot like it. Honestly, I'm going to go Piers. to your house and chop paint Piers. all over it. Piers. Now, Piers flips the script, fantasizing about a culinary crusade into the heartlands of vegan territory. Imagine the scene. A steak aficionado turned veggie vigilante, storming into peaceful plant-based eateries with the fervor of a misplaced matador. <laughs> and just when you think the grill couldn't get any hotter, Piers gets served a steak on set, turning the studio into his personal dining room. It's a plot twist served rare, leaving us to marinate in the irony. In the steakhouse of satire, everyone gets grilled. This I, isn't a part of this about the stereotype. Right. This is about roles that were that were made for people such a, of my stature that don't have the chance to go out for other roles normally. We're zooming in on a big question about small roles. We have peers, a dwarf, and a woke character. In making a towering argument, roles designed for dwarfs should be played by dwarfs. It's about authenticity and respect. Imagine a world where your unique traits are your ticket to certain roles, but suddenly, they're handed to just anyone. Our friend here isn't just fighting for roles, he's advocating for recognition and opportunity. It's important to change narratives that don't fit in today's society. What was so bad realize. about the way dwarves are depicted in Snow White? Have I missed something? Well, that, listen, I'm not that's, here to talk that's about... What I, that's what I'm kind of wondering. Well, 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 it's time the industry measures talent, not height. After all, true talent knows no bounds, and every artist deserves a fair chance to shine. So here's to giving credit where it's due and remembering that the most impactful performances often come in the most compact packages. So Ben is a warmonger. Ben has been wrong on basically every single issue you can name. He was with you with the vaccine and, and every other war. Meet Ben, the maestro of mishaps. One glorious gaffe. At a time. Ben is always calling for other people's young men to go and die in some war. He seems to love it. I don't know if he has short man syndrome. But did he really go there? Oh! He's always behind his desk calling about how important it is that big strong men like me go and die. Behold Ben, the pint-sized puppet master of conflict. Commanding from his desk fortress, in Ben's world, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, or on a second thought, maybe, it is. 
His point there, that you're a warmer and you've got small man syndrome. Ouch! You, said you don't believe any of the reports that women were raped? No, I didn't say that. I said that it's still to well, be do you think they were raped? No, I don't know. It's like the uh, Russell Brand thing. You said we don't know any of the evidence. So why do you apply uh, uh, two I'm different not. standards? I'm okay, it's so been reported. Know, when it's Israel, we know they're raped. When no, it's Russell Brand, it's you been, don't know because you're No, it's been reported by legitimate news sources. When it's Israel, you I know believe, they're raped. But when it's I Russell Brand, you don't know. Them. When it's Russell Brand, you don't know they're raped. There's no comparison between Russell Brand and what's happened It's the same thing. It's a rape allegation. Why are you stuttering? I'm not stuttering. You are stuttering.